there is a word said Vedic, right? Let me define that word for you. When you look at science itself, any branch of science, take physics, chemistry, you know, whatever, any part of science, every time there is something related to that particular science, right? I'll give you my own example. I happen to teach PhD level courses in, uh, you know, quantum mechanics and electronics and all this stuff, right? Well, the funny thing is this, even though I do all those things, I'm yet to see a single electron. <laughs> so if physical, so if, when I started looking at that or when I teach my students about quantum mechanics or something like that, if the guy says, sir, show me an electron first before I believe this. I'll say, I'm sorry, I've not seen it myself, <laughs> you know, so forget about showing it to you, right? I've not seen it myself. And yet, we believe that, right? So, what is science then? It's worth thinking, you know, before we make statements like this, not scientific. Well, science is always based on a hypothesis, right? Somebody, quote, unquote, sees the truth, whatever that is, right? So, they'll say that, for example, there's a, a physicist by the name of Bohr. Uh, some of you come from engineering background, you may know that. So he's the first one who came up with this atomic uh, structure model, right? So he said that, oh, these electrons are there. That's got 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulomb of charge. You cannot go to him and say, show it to me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's a hypothesis, right? So what you do is you conduct, uh, you design an experiment a controlled experiment where you say that I'm going to give this input, measure the output, but that experiment should be such that if his theory is true, one thing should happen. If his theory is wrong, something totally different should happen, right? So you do that repeatedly over and over and over and over again. So after doing it n number of times, you say, you know, I'm going to accept that. Now, my question is this, if that is the case, so if that is science, I started looking at some of these hypotheses that had been thought of in this country for tens of thousands of years. And why should I assume that it's not true, right? So I said, I'm going to conduct an, I'm a researcher, right? So my thing is, okay, I'll design an experiment. You know, I'll, I'll design an experiment, I'll try that, and let's see if it works, right? I'm not just going to believe something just because somebody said so. But on the other hand, if we design an experiment and we find out that the results are consistent with that hypothesis, then being a scientist, I have to accept that, right? And use that, right? Instead of just sitting there wondering is it true or not, I can move on, use that hypothesis and come up with some good stuff, right? Now, the word Veda, let me define that for you. You know, you look up in Wikipedia or whatever, so it'll say, oh, there are four Vedas and all those things. There's Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Sam Veda, all those things, yeah, most of you know that. But I have a question for you. So approximately 5,000 years ago, it is our belief that a person by the name, that was not his name, but who is referred to as Veda Vyasa, gave us these things we called Veda in the form that we know. My question is this, how would I go back 6,000 years? See, this is my problem, right? <laughs> so, if you go back 6,000 years ago, was there nothing? So, I start thinking about that and, and I came to the, after studying this, I do study it, I have a guru, I study these things in a formal way. And I found out that, no, we're not talking about these things at all, right? It turns out the root meaning of that is if something is true, anything, you know, if something is true without bounds, limits of space and time, that is what Veda is. It's just a word. So that means that a truth, whatever it is, right? A truth has to be true, right? For anybody and everybody in any land at any point in time. So it was always true and it should always be true. It has to be true for every single person. The collection of those truths is what is referred to as Veda. If it's in if it's in poetic form, it's called Rig Veda. If it's in prosaic form, it's called Yaja Veda. If it's in musical form, it's called Sam Veda. So, in this set of truths, if you will, right? We we have a whole bunch of 
literature, if you want to call it that. There are historical ones, there are non-historical ones, there are fables and all that. Many of these manuscripts are on palm leaves, um, you know, long, palm, dried palm leaves. And we think that we have technology because of all this, right? So we have hard drives and we have networking and all these things and say, oh boy, you know, I, I have technology. These old fellows, they didn't have any technology. Well, I, I have something surprising for you. These things have lasted seven, eight hundred years. How many of you used a floppy disk? Where are they? <laughs> right? Just in a few years, in, in our own lifetimes, right? I, I cannot even take a f floppy and stick it in my laptop. I can't even do that anymore, right? So what kind of, so is my technology better than that, their technology? Because they lasted six, seven, eight hundred years, right? Well, there's one thing though. There are hundreds of thousands of these things all over the country. It is on medicine, mathematics, science, astronomy, astrology, philosophy, and if you ever happen to go to Oxford University, there's a library called Bodleian Library, and in the basement there's something called India Institute. And that has some of the oldest knowledge base that existed in this country. And most of us don't even know that. So one of the things I'm trying to do, I've been to Oxford twice, I'm trying to get back all these things. There's another huge collection in Germany. We have a lot of things in this country too. So we have technologies, we have a patented. I come from a technology background, so both for extracting the images as well as for preservation. Um, if you're interested in that, go look at our website. Or we have a non-profit trust here, it's called Tara Prakashna. So you can go to taraprakashna.org and you'll see things we do.